terms of their Hearthstone career all the way to the finals of a world championship. Whereas Tice, obviously having the back-to-back -back seasonal championships back in the day, the most successful Hearthstone streamer arguably of all time uh, at this point with uh, continued success. And not only being like a, a meme streamer, as one might kind of expect, given that he plays some wacky decks and uh, demods uh, valued members of the Hearthstone community, uh, but recently hitting rank one legend on stream, very, very impressively showing that he's still got what it takes uh, yeah. in order to fight with I the best of them. Yeah, I, I think, like, uh, I guess in conclusion, Tice is going to continue to prove that he can just do it all year after year. Yeah. And Yala is really just hunting for that first place world spot. That's pretty much all that's left, <laughs> right, for, for him at this moment. So it's, uh, it's pretty crazy the, the level of play we have here over in the European region. But here we are. Players are ready. We are into game number one. Mulligans are up. And already Tice, Swindle, and Efficient Octobar. Now, I've got a question for you, Derek. What do you make of Swindle being a mulligan keep? Because I'm always in two minds about it. I I mean, I would not have made this mulligan. I like... Uh, the way I mulligan, though, to be honest, is quite rigid. I look at the cards that have the highest win rate, or I ask pro players what are the best card in the mulligan, and I just stick to those. I'd never get very creative, but... It makes sense in a way, right? You need extra card draw in the early game uh, unless you hit the exact perfect curve of Mancrick, Jandis, uh, the Kazakus in the early game as well. Uh, so I do think I would have preferred to mulligan just for some actual threats to stick on the board, but it's obviously not bad to have in the early game. Right. Just interesting, Keep, because I normally think with this type of rogue right now, it's really good to go for the minion base early and then you will just naturally hit card draw because yeah. of the the volume of card draw you have in your deck so i'll uh, i think it's just interesting to keep an eye on that swindle and see how impactful it is but no surprise here to see uh the efficiency play on turn two with the octo and y'all <laughs> gotta respond with a uh, fairly surprising bright wing and Sour Fang works with Samuro in the deck, so it's not necessarily useless at all, mm. um, but probably won't have all too much effect. The really interesting thing in this early game was, while Brightwing was a nice minion to get to just play on turn two, after he drew Elusha, I was wondering if he might deliberately not proc the Octobot so that he could go like Holy Smite coin Lucia on turn three or four uh, in order to try and snipe off and steal some of the cheap minions in his opponent's oh, that would have been but sick. It, it would have been cool. I think I might be getting a little bit too deep in the tank there about potential Ooh. plays, but I mean, even now, it's if he goes for it, it would be insane. So he knows there's a juggler there, right? Yeah. We can see Ty's going to go for the one maker now, makes sense, but is Ty's really going to play anything else? Like, I don't think he'd just jam an Og Merchant, right? The brain freeze isn't going to get played. Yeah, definitely not brain freeze. <laughs> it's tempting. I'm not sure if it's correct, but it's tempting, isn't it? They're going into turn four, so what can they play from your hand? Like, if they just dump Zarella, that's not that bad for you as the priest. You still have a good hand. It'll probably be Mancrick, right? I imagine. But well, then it just shuffles it into the priest deck, right? It's it's. Uh, uh, oh yeah, yeah. No, you're right. You're right. It's you're a right. three four. I mean, maybe it would still be Mancrick plus Holy Smite just to dump more cards from the hand, but I don't know. It's. Uh, an interesting one here because again we're obviously we're debating the benefits of it when we can see the hand yala doesn't even have that luxury so he needs to figure right. this out based on unknown information which makes this it makes this an incredibly difficult play especially when mancrick is just good here it's a very strong yes. turn and uh, you would never be too sad about just throwing that down yeah, it means he can hold on to the coin. He still has options for Elusha later in the game. Also, he he has only seen one pen flinger. So maybe he can just wait, knowing that one's there. As soon as he sees two, he can use Elusha. Because that, that's the type of play Yala is. It's like, will Elusha get me something good? Yes. Can it be better? Yeah. Yes. Okay, then I'll wait till it's better. I'm looking for a few good mercenaries. Those didn't look like the best ones. I guess stealth against Priest is uh, good enough, even if it is still vulnerable to Zarella or Samuro sometimes as well. And then draw two cards. Wild Vine is tempting. something tricky he could do here, actually. He could have gone plus two, plus two, right? Mm -hmm. 
and then hold for late game with Golem Tenwu Golem. Right. I, th I think we're kind of we're going a bit too far down the future there. The branching path could end up very differently where you're uh, up behind a board. I mean, I don't hate the idea of picking plus two plus two at all because it might just be good next turn. Uh, but that would be the main reason why I'm picking it, not for like any late game shenanigans. It's only two turns time, right? If you can hold on to the board. That's fair. Yeah. I That's wonder. fair. You know, look, back in the tank now, just thinking about exactly what he needs to do. And there is a fear. I would say this board is wide enough to be a little bit scared of what this golem can do, right? Because if it is plus two, plus two on this board, I think that is a, uh, a reasonable fear factor, especially considering there's no uh, hysteria in Yala's hand right now. Yeah, his board clears are a little bit light until he finds a healing card to go as Zyrella, which kind of incentivizes you to go for a Lucia because even if they, uh, which I think it might be what he's leading up to, even if they don't have an especially good hand for you to steal, they don't get to play the Golem on turn five, which is a big deal. And in addition to that, quite clearly, Yala is stealing a good hand here. And also as well, Yala gets to know what the Golem can do. So he, know, needs to, he gets to know if he needs to be afraid of plus two, plus two or not. You see him even hover then, right? Like, he, he knows, like, okay, well, it's not plus two, plus two, it's draw two and just a five, five, so fine. Yep. Not all too terrible. It does feel like a Zyrella turn, though. Just get it gone. Don't have to think about it. <sighs> yeah, probably. I was going to say that you can go for Condemn to get that out of the way, but Zyrella, obviously, while it's just a 4-4 four, four body to the Rogue, it is significantly more than that to the Priest. Yeah, it's unfortunate there's no one mana card, of course, to just throw away. Hmm. But again, Yala playing the Holy Smite there, just, just new, right? He wanted to clear away the very playable cards and just give Tice very limited options. I can't really see past this, Zarella. You could dig with Insight to try and find something more important, but... I mean, now that Elusha is gone, there's not really any individually important minion that you would be able to play for that mana. Yeah, and also there's like, there's some cards that, because it's got some big like late game cards, you could just do Yala a favor and just spend <laughs> the three mana for him, right? Oh, Olga off the top. Oh. Now we're talking. This is the kind of priest play I was looking for, where it's very focused on the board. Mancrick in the deck. Mancrick's uh, being drawn as well uh, to get a 310 on the board. It's so difficult to ro for Rogue to win these games, where not only do they have to fend off dying, it means that if they ever do stabilize the board, they'll have spent all their damage on just clearing off minions. Yeah, and I think uh, Yala did use a Wicked Stab last turn, right? Yeah. So that's a very cheap, high damage uh, card just gone for Tice at this point. Hmm. Yala, as always, just taking his time though. <laughs> I do just like the idea of whatever happens, play Mancrick this turn. <laughs> Just yeah. get another three. Because Rogue can't kill three tanks, right? It just doesn't happen apart from, like, generating a devolving missiles. There's just no way they die. Yeah, it's just whether or not you, you know, play the... Apotheosis. Yeah. Right, yeah. The the insight whether or not that came down on this turn is the real question. Like, you could have started with that to see what you get, but Mancrick is very likely just the best thing that you can play on this turn. Well, I guess at the very least, there's not going to be any lack of card draw for Tice because he'll just be able to go Tenwu to draw two again next turn and I suppose value trade and heal up afterwards. Like, while this is clearly a very strong situation for Yala, it's not over for Tice at all. He has some strong counterplay coming up at the hands of this Golem. It's weird, right, isn't it? Look at Yala's hand. I would have just at a glance said a bit of a lackluster turn. But it's just not. He can just use this turn to palm yeah. lead, to insight, and just prepare for the next turn. And he just has a massive board as well, so it really is not so bad. It just doesn't look explosive uh, in the hand right now, but still, it doesn't need it to be. He just needs to survive at this point. 
What is a loon's will? I don't think there's any crazy cards he can get off insight that warrant him doing it first. Yeah, I'm thinking about like right wing. Samuro, and if you get a buff as well off the pawn, really, but it's just too much mana used up then. As well, if you thought a 310 was difficult to remove, Rasselgore is literally impossible for the rogue to remove. That will not be going anywhere. Nice soul mirror there, and although I'd sort of glance at the at the second condemn, mm. uh, soul mirror achieves a different role, and I guess that's one of those cards now that you always probably think about, okay, what is the craziest thing Tice could do? How many Jandises could be played against me this game? You know, and like, what's my card that helps with that? And uh, although Condemn's very good, Soul Mirror can be potentially very powerful as well. Yeah, it just and deals it with off the... Uh, five five. <laughs> that's the thing. That's the real kicker here, is they can get rid of the Golem. No more damage can come through to the face, because even with one of the Wicked Stabs having been played, you still always have to be a little bit afraid as Priest that you're not just walking into uh, OTK territory against this rogue. And if he does that, you're laughing. I wonder... I actually quite like the secret this turn. I guess it's pretty just powerful good here, right? Yeah. Like everything else, you know, just isn't going to achieve too much. Ooh. And Yal is just killing him. Like, Tice does not have much time to stabilize things here. But Yala is never one to rush, though, so... Um, oh, no, yeah. <laughs> if he can clear the board and take his time and still be safe, he'll probably just do it. <laughs> yeah, he's trying to just think about how best to sequence things here. I'd imagine he's leading up to a Soul Mirror to end it all off. But if he can test for the Oasis ally first by bumping in, he will do so, and... It's just so clean here. Very nice. Like soul, soul Mirror Condemn, right? Oh, gorgeous. Maybe he just doesn't even deem it worthy. Just go with the insight instead. Yeah. It's just it's just typical Yala, right? Uh, it, does he have to play this Condemn? Not really. <laughs> He won't lose if he doesn't play it, right? I'm not going to play it, then I'll save it for later. <laughs> you know, it's just typical Yala. No rush. Brightwing is going to go face, though. He knows he is extremely safe from this water elemental for a turn while it's frozen. And then thereafter, the damage is going to start coming in very quickly. Uh, Ysera has had some of the bite taken out of it with the most recent change. Uh, Ysera Awakens no longer targets hero. Uh, but hmm. just going for a nightmare, plus four on a minion for a turn with the Apotheosis. That's six bursts that could come out in the next turn or two, which Tice at the moment has very little countermeasure to. And, and there's also just the fact that how does Rogue kill a minion that big? They just kind of don't anymore right yeah, outside true. of double wicked stabs like they just can't do high levels of damage yes there's prize plunderers but i just don't even think the hand's there for ties to do a big prize uh, prize plunderer turn on a huge minion anyway it's why the uh the man crick the enraged man crick is so powerful this early because you just can't kill it it's just a three damage every single turn and again now that saved condemn looking extra juicy on this turn oh there's sammy Do you ever just play it on this turn? I know it doesn't go with the Apotheosis, but with you can play it, which gets you a full clear with the Condemn, and then it can get what? resurrected what? by Sourfang, which is, uh, you know, a two damage AoE if you ever needed that from here on in. I mean, it doesn't seem bad. I think if there's ever a deck you like low amount, like low damage, but wide sort of, you know, AoE styles, it's Rogue, right? Because they yeah. play boards like this. I don't mind that at all. I think Yala is beyond the point of needing Samuro to Apotheosis to heal him up. He's still on 25. He's fine. Yeah, that's very true. He can even hero power with that turn, so he can just heal his own face, heal the Watchtower up. Yeah, no matter what you heal here, it's insane. Like the Watchtower, the Elemental, uh, maybe even Samuro himself. Jeez. 
He might not even, yeah, I was going to say, he might not even <laughs> condemn, because it only kills one minion, Derek, and condemn can kill more than one minion, so he's not going to play it. Fair enough, milk that value, Yala. You do you. It is so funny watching him play because, one, he's very good, but he just plays in such a, a way that I don't think that many other players do or even come close to. I think there are a lot of players who would have pushed three to the face there and didn't want their man quick frozen for an extra turn. He truly is just the uh, the octobot of Hearthstone, where efficient <laughs> is sufficient. He doesn't need to go any further than that. It's It's good enough what he's doing here, and it makes him one of the best in the world. And this is what I was talking about earlier, right, where Rogue can stabilize most of these board states, absolutely, but they have to use up all of their resources to do so. Every single one of these spells equals another Penflinger activation, which is not going face. And he right. just knows that it's not coming close to winning him and the, the game. And, like, what can Tice even get out of the remaining cards here, right? Like, what, what is there even available for him to get here? Is it really just Jandis at this point? Jandis, one thief into Deck of Chaos? Uh, deck of Lunacy, sorry. Like, uh, uh, it's getting to that point already. He's just right. losing on board. And with this Apotheosis coming down on the Rattlegore or the Samuro or Ysera or whatever, it's just too much uh, oh, well, well. Uh, ties to come back again. Does Yala need Apotheosis to survive? No, therefore he will not play it. <laughs> I mean, I thought we were going to get the one quick turn out of him from the game with just slam rattle gore. Clearly, I was wrong. He's going to wait yep. the full seventy seconds and He's then got slam a lot to learn. <laughs> <laughs> Over here, we're veterans of casting Yala games. We know what's up. There's no rush. If he doesn't need to play something, he definitely won't. All I'm saying is, Glory would have slammed this fifty seconds ago and be giggling like a schoolgirl by now. And. Uh, Who's the world champion again? Okay, just <laughs> <laughs> and you know what? Can't even argue. <laughs> He's going to be Ralgar at the end. Now I think he was just weighing up what Ysera actually could have done that turn because right. there would have been other options with the the Ysera cards, of course. But it's going to be secret passage here for Ties. This is a card that can help him out a lot. Mm. It's quiet. You can draw more. It's fine. Duggo will get him a draw. Hey, loser! And at this point, do you think, uh, obviously depending on what this draw is, can be worth just shadow stepping the uh, the field contact? Uh, seven cards left in deck. Some are going to shuffle back through. Sure. Yeah, you need the extra card draw to make it. I just think Tyson needs to draw the whole deck to, to do something at this point. He's going to go for Mancrick instead. Yeah, an extra Olgra is probably his best chance. Maybe if both of them come down and... He can get Mask of Cthulhu or something off his one thief. I don't know. Oh, double juggler, uh, double penflinger in hand now. Sorry. So again, there's wicked stab, double penflinger. The damage does start to stack up, but he does need these uh, these enraged man cricks to actually kick out very quickly. Sourfang does not quite clear the board here. It would need a little bit of extra help uh, if he wanted to get a full clear. Yeah, you just trade with the Ralgo, right? I wonder. <laughs> Disgusting. How can you even suggest such a play? Uh, I mean, I guess the other thing to say is that it's pretty close to lethal with just Ysera, uh and Nightmare as well. Yeah, I mean, one more. If the Apotheosis wasn't one extra cost, right? Right. Could just get the job done. It's it's meticulous, isn't it? I think Yala could play any cards and go face with Ralgor, and he would win this game of Hearthstone. But what, how could he win it more often, right? Is all he's yeah. thinking about right now. And it is, it is great to watch. He's going to go for the Salfang. And is it finally he condemned time? He could just Hysteria, right? There you go, just gonna wave of apathy. Yeah, we both know that this one is gonna be 
more than likely enough to take care of things. There is the Wand Thief, the so card I was saying is the... Cold? The slim chance, yeah. Kona Cold to freeze the board, I guess, and obviously hope there's no Ysera available. And yeah, even though technically the Devolving Missiles can deal with Rattle Gore, it, you still have a, an 8 drop most likely following afterwards as well. Okay, there are still options. Doesn't look great, but this is, you know, at, at the very worst, this is showing off the power of Rogue, even when yep. they look like they've got the back to the wall. There's still things they can do. You know, if this was Hunter, I would have been in the next, like, probably the third game by now. <laughs> Yeah, that doesn't look like it's going to be enough the way I can see it, Dyrek, and, uh, you know, a bit of a, a slower-paced one as we expect, but Yala taking the win and looks like he had so, he was so comfortable with the victory as well, even if somehow Ty's pulled some out of the bag and cleared some of that board. Which other cards do you want to pick for Yala to win the game with? Because he had them. So very, very comfortable Priest win against Tyce's Rogue and a good first step for Yala to uh, have a very, very successful week number one. Just gorgeously done. He was ahead right from the get-go. That Alusha turn, uh, and then obviously an early Mancrick helps a huge amount when you res back another one. And he didn't even find the second Mancrick, which would have just locked out the game even sooner. Uh, but just excellent understanding of how you lock down the board against Rogue, and then they really struggled to come back. I especially love that he had this Condemn for one mana in hand for a long, long time against Rogue and just never needed to play it. Like, it is so funny to watch. And we see the value of Samuro as well. It wasn't, didn't have a huge buff. It didn't do anything too crazy, but even just the the, like, the, the double swing, right? The, the kind of like one damage, one damage AOE, yep. uh, or the one damage AOE you can get can be enough. And that's why it's such a flexible card because even after that, the high health on it means that, okay, it's done its frenzy, but you could still just buff it and it's still just a big minion, right? That, that's a yep. problem to deal with. So see Samuro, I think we might see a little bit more of Samuro in the future as maybe post nerfs that are coming next week. The uh, and I shouldn't say post nerf because people think I'm just talking about nerfing watch posts. <laughs> After the nerfs hit, uh, I imagine the game becomes a little bit more board focused and more trade focused in general. So we'll see if Samuro uh, continues to take some of the spotlight here. But it does mean Yala's got two decks left to play and to get victories with. And uh, the oh, looks like it's going to be a Warlock Mirror, Derek. And this could get spicy very, very quickly because when the mirror of this matchup happens, it gets kind of weird because a lot of the removal doesn't matter for most of the game because it's a lot of small removal and the Warlocks right. don't normally play any, you know, tons of small minions that they care about. So the mirror can get very, very spicy and Ticketus itself could come into play here. Very likely. Uh, you'll have to forgive my country bumpkin APAC sensibilities in this one because uh, back home, we hit each other in the face. We don't play control decks over there. We play token druid and we lose and we're happy about it, okay? <laughs> uh, but I will try my best to switch uh, my mindset over. Uh, it seems for the most part, like a lot of the lists I've seen for the control warlock here for Tice, Venomous Scorpion is actually having uh, something I haven't come across on ladder in the warlock, but if it works well for Priest, I imagine it will work very well in a somewhat similar style of deck in the warlock, where a lot of good spells to discover and most importantly, it's just really annoying for a lot of decks to, uh, decks to deal with that uh, poison on the Scorpid. I do feel like, uh, as we can see, just uh, I'll be a little bit serious for a second. Uh, I do see that, you know, obviously in Yala's list, he's not running the Scorpids. He's only running one Ogre Mansa. He has those Cascading Disasters, though, which are so, so powerful. Yeah. Uh, along with uh, Militia, which is one of the tools that you can maybe either put pressure on with, soak up a Twisting Nether, etc. But really just can potentially win you the game if it comes down to an awkward moment. But I was just going to mention when you comment on the NA pack and especially Token Druid, I feel like they, you know, it's it's almost like playing a simplified version of Hearthstone where the game becomes you draw your your mulligan, 
you put them down, show each other, and whoever has the most powerful <laughs> ones, just you, okay, well, you won that round, round number two, and you just shuffle the deck and draw the mulligan again, because that's what it feels like with not only the way it plays, but also the speed of that region. It's so funny overall. But yeah, we are going to dive into this uh, kind of interesting warlock mirror that i'll be honest derek i've not seen a lot of and when i've run into it a little bit on ladder a lot of it can come down to it's less sort of efficient play and more who can get to ticketers who can get to yasharaj and a good yasharaj quickly and whoever gets to that first normally has a very very impressive standing in who gets further ahead yeah i wonder if this might start to <laughs> Like in a lot of the old control warlock mirrors, uh, way back in the day, it very often shook down to where you weren't supposed to tap at all. And then in some matters, it turned to you were supposed to tap, but people thought you weren't because they were bad. And then we had, uh, you know, a couple of other tools come into play that disrupted the fatigue mechanics of the matchup. I think, however, with Ticketus in this matchup, the ability to destroy up to 10 cards in your opponent's deck, you are going to be rapidly drawing through your deck in order to try and find that and just delete your opponent's resources for the most part. Yeah, and it's kind of... It, it that style also can play like a double-edged sword, right? Because by drawing quickly to get to those tools, if you don't get to them and then your opponent ticketers you, well, you've yep. got even less of the deck to work with because and you, you're going to hit fatigue even faster because you've drawn it set so quick looking for those tools. Looks like we do have a slight disconnect. The players will be reconnecting shortly, of course, but even these opening hands look fairly slow. And I think you can see what I was talking about earlier. Like, Tice has double school spirits. Like, okay like that doesn't really achieve much in the mirror it puts the fragments in but again you actually don't want fragments in your deck too early because you don't want them to draw when you're on full health you want the fragments to be loaded into the back end of the game so that they can go off and as you're may maybe hitting fatigue and you're taking that fatigue damage the soul fragments then pop back you know back to back and can heal you for a lot so but neither of these players really having what i would call a great opening hand here and honestly even for yala that militia's okay and at least it can be an emergency ticketus proc later down the line, but even these strongmen just aren't that great for Tice at all. Yeah, it's not the kind of hand that you're looking for right out the gate, but uh, you know, with Scorpid on three going for the Ogre as well, like it's not like you really want to develop minions, especially in the early game. You're just trying to tap through to your good cards, I would wager, and then find Lord Jaraxxus as soon as possible as well, as Yala has got himself there. Uh, it's going to be a close one, with neither player looking like they have a decisively winning hand quite yet. Oh, I'm actually tempted for Dark Ooh. Portal here. Same. Yeah. I think that As could I be pretty sick. Drain Soul, not really needed. Mortal Coil, not really needed. Draw a minion? Yes. <laughs> I will take that. I mean, obviously, most of the outcomes are okay, but if you hit Ticketus, Alexstrasza, or Yasharj, that is going to be oh. ludicrous. Also, bear in mind, there are, what, one, two, three, four minions already in his hand that he obviously yeah. then can't draw. He's A Scorpid's gone. That's Scorpid number two gone. So he's getting to the point where he's almost guaranteed to, like, the worst case is hitting Ogre, which is still not bad. Yeah, he's got a few mediocre outcomes, like the... Uh well, they're called Lucky Soul Hoarders and Tamsin as well. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but for the most part, not too bad at all. Uh, I'm definitely looking at this turn primarily at just going for coin into Ogre Mancer. Uh, but it looks like instead he's just ripping the Dark Portal now, even if it means potentially overdrawing would be the real problem I have with it. We not you. Yeah, I, I agree with this play. I think this is just better, right? Like, what what is actually going to be the response from this? You can see Yala has a an Ogamancer of his own. He could just Siphon Soul instead. It would proc the Cascading Corruption as well, which is always nice. You want That's that true. Cascading Disaster to really cycle up to three before you pushed into playing Yasharaj. But like this, yeah, there's a 2-2 on the board. Who cares? I think is the correct response here from Yala. It's another shot of the Dark Portal here and can even just follow up with the uh, Jailer at the end as well. So it seems like a premium time to throw it down. Oh. Oh, I mean, that's not bad, actually. Yeah, you can get yourself uh, play that very cheap with uh, even the more expensive spells in your deck. Like getting yourself an extra Twisting Nether, that could be very useful.
Yeah, it's probably one thing that makes this card not completely broken is that Cascading Disaster uh, isn't a shadow spell, uh, which is probably oh, good for all of our uh, <laughs> brains at this point. But there's still, you know, Hysteria, Soul Shear, Drain Soul. Uh, you mentioned Twisting Nether, which there's only a one of in Tice's deck. So there's still plenty of stuff. And anything he gets from uh, the Venomous Scorpid as well, right? Yeah, that could be a very big deal as well. I mean, I'm obviously certainly leaning towards just slamming the uh, the Ogomancer on this turn uh, for Yala. It's vulnerable to Cascading Disaster. It's vulnerable to uh, a play of just throwing down the Siphon Soul as well. But it's always going to be open to those possibilities. I don't feel like it's going to get much better than this. Like, you might well just be going for Soul Shear. And weirdly enough, we're in that territory again where Ooze is good versus Warlock. Right. Draxus. Because <laughs> that, that damage again on Draxus stacks up the, the weapon damage now. It does. I, I do think I like here from Yala. If he's going for this game plan of maximum tappage each turn, you want to clear the cards out of your hand. So get rid of the cards in hand, tap until you find Ticketus, uh, corrupt it, and then delete your opponent's deck. Yep. I agree, but I actually think it's Tapage. <laughs> to pronounce it. <laughs> Apologies. <laughs> Does it look like Scorpid is available. Obviously, the Jailers are very easily like just play away and forget about Minion. But again, you do really want these fragments way later on in the game. So it's it's one of those weird moments where like cards have to be played but i just don't think tice will want all these fragments in the deck so early what this does do is set up for a very strong militia though next turn so at least he's going to be able to generate a board and kind of force out a twisted nether potentially from yala unless he plays militia first yeah, going for his own one prematurely. I mean, has he got that many in the deck at this point? He's gone with a... Uh, let me check. Soul Jailer and a Soul Shear. So it would only be four, I think. Uh, three. Ah, oh, right, with one being drawn. Yep. And uh, Tice has four. Is that just enough, though? I'm definitely looking at it. Like, whatever he's doing, he he wants to start playing cards from his hand. Like, corrupting that Cascading Disaster is a big deal as well. I was just going to say, he could just tap Ogomancer, right? Like, if he wants to keep tapping, get to Ticketus, get to everything corrupted. Like, this is this is the other play that I think is very, very reasonable. He's nothing if not consistent. I'll say that. A Militia coming out from Tice, as I mentioned, four fragments in the deck. And also this has the nice benefit of not summoning any extra minions. Who's number two? So now again, we can just carry on with the game plan, right? Uh, cascading tap. I mean, maybe even just going for... Uh, dealing two damage right out the gate with the Drain Soul first, and then Cascading Tap just to keep the, the hand space nice and low. I quite like the Hysteria, actually, because it's actually less powerful than Cascading, but it did the sure. same job then. Whereas when the bigger minions come down, Cascading's going to be clutch, I think. I guess now the big question is actually whether or not Yala will play the Jaraxxus on turn 9. Uh, I have the suspicion that he will, and maybe he's just tapping extra aggressively now to make up for the fact that he won't be able to card draw mm. afterwards once Jaraxxus comes down. Oh, but man. honestly, I wouldn't be that surprised if he just puts all the focus on finding Ticketus and ignores the Jaraxxus and keeps hypercycling through his deck. Yeah, I, I think almost regardless of what he draws next turn, he will go for Jaraxxus because one Jaraxxus would activate Ticketus anyway, but also it's just the 6-6 six, six every single turn does outweigh the other plan, in my opinion. If your opponent's trying to like fatigue you and go for Ticketus, and you're just making a 6-6 six, six for two mana every turn, I think that definitely outweighs the, uh, the, the tapping. I think he takes this opportunity to go. He gets double Strongman corrupted as well. And when he has the Yashiraj already in hand, I think it's way too good to pass up. I agree.
I like it. It's a very, very safe Draxus, and if you can play a very safe Draxus, you probably should play it. And it really does just make such a difference. Like, you were always so afraid to play it back in the day against any minion on the board at all, because it just meant you were close to dying already. But now, it's just a powerhouse. You realize this was a powerful card all along. It was just too brittle to make proper use of it. But now, pumping out those 6-6s six every turn is just not going to be enough removal. It really was only left behind in the, you know, the, the sort of power scaling up of newer expansions and newer years of Hearthstone, right? Uh, yeah. Because in Classic, it, outside of maybe Freeze Mage, it was good enough, yeah, right? True. Because you could play it when you were secure on the board. Yeah, the update definitely overall a benefit. There are some small circumstances where it's a weaker card if you're on lower health, but yeah, generally pretty strong. Yeah, you're very happy to see it. Now, uh, the Cascading Disaster, which I think has been upgraded uh, twice here, so it'd be Destroy 3. So it would be fine to see it come down here for Tice. He would still get the full version off of Yasharge later on. But he definitely won't actually, want to use it unless he has to. He could actually, even in the the weird ways, go like Tamsin, Train Soul, Train Soul, Train Soul, Train Soul, uh, which would be pretty oh, true, yeah. <laughs> Not that I'm saying that's the correct play, but it's just a play that can be made with this zero amount of Tamsin. You're going to be okay with just killing one here? It's reasonable. Well, if he was afraid of losing the card draw, Backfire is a great way to mm. keep that rolling and draw himself closer to the Ticketus, which still neither player has found, despite having uh, gotten access to their Yasharges already. This Militia is looking very strong too, right? Clears the board, he has, he'll has. he have 1-3-3 three, three left over. You have the 5-5 five, five Militia, the 6-6 six, six can go face, push an extra 3 with the weapon, and he gets to press hero power. Like, what more do you want from a Warlock turn? Yeah, I fully agree. I think it's time to go in nice uh, nice and high on the tempo each turn, as long as he's milking that hero power, just as he was doing with the life tap, as he has, is now doing as well with summoning a chaos elemental as well. There will be a Before small, fell. tiny bit in Yala's brain that will hurt him. Like, it, it'll, it'll hurt that he floats a mana here, but it's still correct. <laughs> He'll be like, oh, could I have done that? <laughs> Yeah, I think you will happily accept your absurd amounts of mana uh, expenditure and uh, stat generation on the board on this turn. This might have to just be Twisting Nether. Do you throw in the Tams in as well at that point just to get an extra big removal spell? Does it's it going to be pretty necessary. I've never actually done it. Oh, I guess maybe it wouldn't, yeah. Yeah, I don't know if Tamsin dies before the effect goes. Because it's like after the spells cast, right? So yes. I don't know if that would work necessarily. You're probably right. You're probably. But there's still times in a double school spirit strain soul, right? Or like school spirit strain soul, school spirits. Okay, clearing hand space first, I suppose. Didn't get the ticketus, I imagine, with that face. Nope. Yikes. Wait a minute. Oh, is he gonna cast? Instead. I guess if he's clearing out the three threes. Yeah, it wasn't the most insane of Tamsins, but in this particular matchup, it rarely is going to be. You need to hit like Siphon Soul for it to be properly popping. And look at this, Drax is on above 30. Oh, <laughs> two armor vendors in hand. <laughs> Disgusting. I actually cannot believe we've not seen Ticketus from either player yet. Really buried down there. I mean, it's going to get to the point where it won't even matter if it's like the bottom card in both players' deck. Yeah, I mean, this is what Yala has left. Which is pretty crazy since Ticketus is just by far the best card left in his yeah. deck right now. <laughs> Well, now that Backfire has been used, he actually doesn't have any way to keep the card draw rolling, though. So I guess, arguably, the most important thing here is just to, what, upgrade and then spend the Cascading Disaster so that he can get them back off of the charge in a timely fashion. 
I, I, I feel like you can always be greedy with this because there's only Twisting Nether and Yasharaj left that will actually even proc Ticketus. Mm. So you'll need to wait for Twisting Nether anyway in a perfect world, right? Although maybe not, because if he draws Ticketus by the time Tice has less than 10 cards anyway, it won't matter to play the second one. All right, Tice can only have so many bad cards left in the deck at this point. He needs to be getting uh, Alex Straza or Ticketus, obviously, Jaraxxus of his own something to start achieving his game plan here because he has just been getting the most turgid draws I have ever seen. Awful. Ta Talon would have drawn Drax uh, <laughs> Sorry, would have drawn Alex Straza. <laughs> Drax is still in there. Ticket is still in there. Yeah. So literally all four good cards are in the bottom of his deck. And and also as well, considering Alex Straza will then prop the double strongman in hand, which then goes into the Asharaj pool and so on. So, yeah, both players having a little bit of unlucky moments there. But uh, here's the question now. Tice just shuffled a ton of soul fragments in. He's currently sitting on 10 soul fragments. Mm. So I think Yala can wait and try and try and wait till these soul fragments get drawn and then Ticketus. Oh, absolutely. I mean, what is the alternative, right? He would have to play your charge to corrupt it anyway. Like, yeah, that's what I mean. You can either wait for twisting or play Yasharad like this. Oh, turn right. Okay. To uh, activate it for next turn. But I think he can wait. He's, he's very easily winning. He's making a six, six every turn. Yeah, I agree. Uh, I think that with Twisting Nether not having been played by your opponent, it's pretty likely that the uh, Yasharj plus Strongman combo is not quite good enough to get there yet. Suppose. I think Yal is at the point of why not. He, he has the game plan. He's only got a few cards left. Like, will him oozing a Jaraxxus weapon, if Tice even gets Jaraxxus fast enough, even matter at this point? Versus him having a 3-2 on board. Yep, Tice yep. just uh, <laughs> the clock. Oh, these fragments are so bad. Like, each one is another card that doesn't get burned. Uh, down to four soul fragments out of the nine cards now. Right. I mean, he found Ticketus, importantly, so... What do you do? Twisting Nether, double strongman here, Ticketus the turn after, Yasharj the turn after that. I pretty much has to be the plan. I think so. And you can just stop uh, tapping now as well, right? Like unless you hit exactly Jaraxus, but even then you can be pretty sure that your opponent doesn't have a corrupted Ticketus in hand, or they would have played it at this point. Right. So many possibilities. I'm almost out of time. Makes sense. Yeah, it's a straightforward game plan, but it's all he's got <laughs> left. Twisting Nether found is perfect for Yala as well. There's even a really nice little combo that Yala's got in hand with Tamsin, Drain Soul, Siphon Soul. True. So that means he gets like two, a zero mana Siphon Soul and a zero mana Drain Soul in his hand, which is tons of sustain. That's a very good point. I mean, it, it's just looking fantastic for Yala. He has access to, as you said, extra removal with the Tamsin, the Siphon, and the extra Cascading Disaster as well. He has the same Ticketus Yashaj combo as Yala on the other side, but the difference maker is, I was going to say, he has a Jaraxxus, but Tice doesn't. That, however, does make things a little more interesting. I do think he can't wait to play Ticketus, though. So yeah. Because if he plays Draxus, he just takes six, and then that's it. Whereas the longer he waits with Ticketus, the worse it's going to be, because it won't actually burn as many cards for Yala. Okay. Okay. Ty seeing he burned absolutely nothing of value whatsoever. He was praying that Ticketus would be down at the bottom, but it was found just in time for Yala. 
just Spirit Jailer and Twisty Nether. And Twisty Nether could, is potentially pretty clutch, right, as a card left in his deck. Because that's just a, oh, somehow, Ty, you know, Tice does the Yasharaj turn, right? And then Yala just Twisting Nethers, whereas Tice only runs one Twisting Nether. And Tice loses some pretty premium cards, actually. Alex Straza and Cascading Disaster are deceptively important cards. Talon is the only <laughs> card he's got left. I draw... Oh, wait. <laughs> yeah, I think Yala may have just had the upper hand for one turn too long here. And look at the difference early Drax has made. Yala's oh, yeah. always ahead on board. Just always. And now this is the problem, right? Like, he'll have to do the Yasharaj turn, but then Yala has his Yasharaj turn in which he can play the, uh, the Cascading to clean that side of the board up. That's right. It just does not matter how much Tice develops here. With double Cascading Disaster on the other side for Yala, he will obliterate the entire board and then I feel like just be in an unlosable situation. Yep, and then for health benefit one, he's also got 18 armor somehow uh, in this game of Hearthstone. <laughs> but also he has that Tamsin Siphon Soul Drain Soul to not only kill minions, but heal a ton as well. The other thing that is often forgotten about your charge is that even though you get them all for zero mana on that turn, you don't have to play all your corrupt cards. Like Yala will very happily play one of the Cascading Disasters and then just save the other. Yeah, I think he might actually even save Ticketus, right? If he has the knowledge of what Tice has, he'll know Hysteria's there. Sure. So he yeah. could actually just play Yasharaj, clear this, and say, well, what have you got? Then yeah. Tice has to play his uh, Strongman, and then he can react from there. And if he More. does play the two Strongmen, then he has the Siphon Soul turn with Tam Tamsin, right? That's right. I mean, you are just making more and more excellent points about why Yala is winning this game, with which I thoroughly agree. I, I'm going to be very interested to see if he plays a minion, though, because I think this 10-10 is more than enough. Yep. And if anything, if anyone thinks... Or if anyone knows when not to play more than needed, it's Yala. Because what's the response, right? I mean, if Yala's been keeping track, he knows nothing. You can play Talon to put it in the way. Obviously, strong men as well. Uh, but with Cascading Disaster number two, or more appropriately, number four, I should say, it's more than enough. It's a great spot by you, and yeah. it's uh, a great spot by Yala as well, working with imperfect information. Or at least, it, it is perfect information, but it's very difficult to keep track exactly of what Tice will have access to. And this is just, yes, you know, Tice has Draxus down finally, which is way too late than he would have liked. Yep. But there's just going to be a free 10 10 attacking face because no matter what Tice plays, Yala 100% has it dead. And then can do it all over again the turn after. And Ty Yala now can just hit that hero power and keep saving his minions if he wants to. And just never let Hysteria clean up the Yasharaj. Yeah, Tice knows in this situation it's damned if you do, damned if you don't, with playing minions. How shall I destroy now, these are muscles? Yep, one of the quickest turns you'll ever see Yala play. <laughs> <laughs> Not quietly. Really mapped out. Yeah, it's just a lock victory from here, which will bring him up two games to zero. The Priest and the Warlock uh, both having one at that point, which would leave him with just, uh, what is Paladin left over, given that he's one of the few players not bringing Rogue once again? Yep. Yeah, we'll just have Paladin left. And definitely looks like as well he's in the same kind of, if not practice group, at least philosophy of thinking as Psycho with that one veteran war medic carry will roam in there as well. Mm -hmm. oh, I love the hold so much. It's so, yeah. he's just putting him in that perfect position like tailing comes down to force the hysteria to come out now. And because of the divine shield, it will clear the board. And then Yala just says, okay, well, I'll kill your 6-6. Six, six. Now I play a 6-6 six, six and two strong men. And now I know you've got no way to remove this board. And then that'll just be GG. Oh, I tell you, I just love watching Yala play. It's, it's, it's just great. It's such a treat. Like, obviously, we get very, very strong caliber of play in APAC as well. But it's just, it's just different to Yala. He plays like no one else. And it's truly a treat to watch.
So now we could actually still like, yeah, Tamsin, Siphon, Soul, or go for Drain Soul, but I think I like a zero mana Siphon. Uh, and then just play double Strongman. And it's like, well, there's literally no cards that kill this board. Or he, no, no, in reality, he probably won't even play the Strongman. He'll be like, you know what? That could be a wave number 800, just in case Tice puts himself out of his misery here as he knows he's not got the goods to get the job done. And I just agree with what you were saying earlier, right? Like, Yala, it, it, it's incredible. And this is just season upon season he's been doing this. He just plays better than, than everyone else. And it's so incredible to watch that, you know, I think so many players would have gone for, oh, well, I'll just play out the second ticket just because it's an 8-8. But Yala has the knowledge that Hysteria is there. That could cause him some trouble. Whereas if he just played that uh, Yasharaj down alone, he had all the tools required to hit Tyson in the uh, face for 10 the following turn. And it paid off. And there's Ty's just then, and this is what I was talking about earlier with the soul fragments. You don't want tons in your deck early because of this. Like those healed for nothing that game. Yeah, and most importantly, they're just fodder to distract Ticketus from the rest of your deck. If he burns five soul fragments, it's bad because you're closer to fatigue in a way, but you're going to draw through them anyway. Uh, you don't get the healing, but it's much better than them discarding real cards. But you drew like five or six in a row at that point, which was the worst thing that could possibly happen. And from there, that was just the final uh, nail in the coffin. Yala able to push on through with a clinical display. And of course, you know, we, we're, and quite rightly, saying how good Yala has played. There is just something to know, I guess, in defense of Tice, that Tice didn't play badly. He just got his opponent in a mirror, get one of the key cards about 20,000 turns earlier. Oh, yeah. Draxus. You know, Yala getting to land Draxus very safely, and then Tice having it in, I think it was bottom five of his deck, is, is such a huge difference when that hero power comes into play turn after turn. So, you know, although we are saying how well Yala played, and that is true, Taking nothing away from Tice, that one. I, I think that was a very rough game for him to try and pilot through. But we are going to be moving on now to Tice deciding to take a step back and go for that Paladin. And it is going to be... Oh, sorry. we uh, I think we misspoke earlier. Yala's Paladin is banned, right? We said this at the start of the series. Oh, right. Sorry. My mistake. Yeah, Yala's going to be playing his Mage. Oh, my Tice has chosen to leave up. So we'll see how that one plays out. But Tice of the uh, Kazekas Libran Paladin school... Uh, so we'll see how this one goes off. And Kazakas, again, although I think most of the casters have been kind of dumping on it a little bit <laughs> in Paladin specifically, when it does go off, it is very powerful. Like, there is no denial. Yep. It's just how often that happens is the tricky part. So we'll see how how or if it pays off for ties going forward. But Yala, going to be on the old mage, Derek. And is there anything that really jumps out in this build to you? I mean, it's very heavy on the secret package, right? With double barrier, uh, netherwind portal, and ring toss as well. It's definitely not the list that I would have gone for myself. But again, Yala always has some kind of reasoning uh, up his sleeve, I would imagine, as to why he's going for these lists. I personally prefer the slightly more aggressive builds with like double netherwind portal, not running the ice barrier. Not a big fan of ring toss either. Uh, but the main core of the deck is still there. Lunacy and Kansas Flow, refreshing spring water. And I'm a big fan of the quadruple seven drop package to just give you maximum chances to hit in a grand slam once deck of Lunacy upgrades them to three uh, mana cost more, the full 10 cost spells. Uh, and outside of that, against Paladin specifically, as Subtle was saying yesterday, as redundant as it sounds, try and draw deck of Lunacy. It'll be good for you, trust me. I actually think this build from Yala is extremely intelligent, right? For this tournament, it's not necessarily a build you play on ladder, but Yala knows he's probably banning mage, right? So he doesn't have to worry about the mirror. Mm. If his mage is left up, it's probably, you would assume, and I think it's a fair assumption, that there'll be aggro decks and decks that want to kill him quickly. Then suddenly, the extra secrets, you know, more chances at ice barrier, natural ice barrier, netherwind pole, all these are kind of anti-aggro tools as well. So uh, I think this is a really good heads up build to say, well, if mage gets left up, it's probably going to be facing aggro. So what's that point. best against that? So we'll see if it pays off for him, but that's what I read from the list anyway. Yeah, I think even then, uh, I 
I do agree with your point. Against all of the aggro decks, I kind of like just having as much kind of aggressive potential as possible and trying to cheese them out you with just burn. Want to aggro the aggro decks. Right, right? exactly. Like, like because if it's rogue, then they don't have much healing at all. Hunter, if they're going for that, doesn't have any healing. They're like obviously you're trying to hit deck of lunacy, and if you do, it doesn't matter all too much anyway what your division of secrets are. But in games like this, where Yala has missed, uh, I think having a little bit of extra burn could definitely help him because with double a pet. <laughs> Quite right, Raven. Uh, with double Apexis Blast in hand, he's looking to turn things around in the mid game where he becomes the aggressor. Yeah, nothing too crazy early on. And unfortunately, none of the uh, the power plays on two that aren't Deck of Lunacy, you know, mainly, I guess, Encanter's Flow uh, can help out a lot as a turn two play, but just does end up pinging and passing, whereas Tice also doesn't really have the great openers, right? Doesn't have mm. a target for Hand of a Doll. Doesn't have the uh, Soldier of the Fallen to get the secrets going, so can't even, like, Soldier of the Fallen to set up the Commander next turn. He's also having a rough time having to just Hero Power on turn to himself. This hand really not coming together for me at the moment for Yala. Like, he didn't get even the Font of Power at the start, so he can't develop any minions. No refreshing Spring Water, so he can't cycle through his deck. This turn four is looking super dead. It is nearly the aggro hand you want, though, right? Apexis Blast, Apexis Blast, Mask, Mask, Lethal. Mm, yeah. <laughs> you're not wrong, but you're not right. You asked for this, Derek. <laughs> I, signif I distinctly recall you asking for exactly this hand, Derek. <laughs> Job's done. So only now Yala has having to at least half consider secrets, which I feel like is a luxury. For Mage right now, turn four is the first time he has to think about a secret. Yep. Uh, whereas normally I feel like it's on two or one so often. Kazakus is active as well. Yeah, weird spot though, right? Like, Kazakus obviously kind of is contesting with Aldor Truthseeker for the five mana slot because I, I'm expecting Tice to go for the five mana golem here. He could go for one cost, I suppose, just to try and get like a wide board buff at the start. Uh, but by going for five here and getting plus two, plus two, as I imagine he's probably going to pick, uh, he gets a pretty impressive board state if he oh. is able to stick it. I actually don't mind just summoning a copy versus mage as well. Sure. Because that's just a lot of health you put on the board, right? So killing them off can be pretty tough. I wonder how good you feel, because if you feel like you're going to slowly start losing the matchup, I really like the idea of just jamming plus two, plus two, because, you know, even if you just get four burst damage against the mage, that is a big deal in closing things out. Oh, Ring Toss is corrupted now here for Yala and gets a uh, Truth Seeker of his own on his side of the board. So pretty annoying, actually, with that kind of six health. It's you know, pretty tough to push through. He did go for Summon Copy Fair with enough. Divine Shield. So mm. going to have two pretty tanky minions, kind of hard to take down. But if there's something Mage does, it's either stall or devolve your minions that you like. So both those things available for Yala. Yeah, it definitely appears like it's going to be a devolving Apexis turn. Uh, depending on what happens, of course, if you can snipe one of the fours into uh, fives into fours, sorry, you're likely to target that and then just push everything else uh, either into value trades or likely just towards the dome. You need to start killing your opponent if you're not drawing the uh, the lunacy. Do you actually like some kind of trade first here or not? Because there's a chance devolving could whiff with four minions and two sort of null targets on the board. Ugh. I don't like it at all. I'm still not certain if it's correct or not, but I hate it. <laughs> I just don't like it. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yeah, sure. Oh. oh, no! Wait a minute. That's not how this should have happened. <laughs> all right, Tice. There's your good luck, all right? The, the universe is square with you again. You also gave, like, you know, the, the computer kid thumbs up. But <laughs> he just gave the nod. And he also kind of looks like him a little bit as well, so maybe you can pull that off. Okay. Oh! You get nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Garbage. I wouldn't play that hey. for three mana. Get Solarin! <laughs> yeah. Big ol' yikes.
What a weird game so far. This has not gone how I expected it to at all. Yeah, very weird. Mm. Like, I mean, obviously the mage is very far from peak efficiency without Encanter's Flow, Refreshing Spring Water, or Deck of Lunacy, most importantly. But the Paladin isn't doing anything especially disgusting so far either. They haven't gotten even close to killing the mage so far. I, do you like coin oh my yog with this double we'll commander team? Going into flame strike? Yeah, that sounds good. Oh. Is gonna hold back? Oh, I'm really surprised. I think the the yog there would have been really nice. Especially because Yala's had some cards in his hand for a long time. So mm. you you've had to got to at least have an inkling. That with the past turns early on, where it was just ping and then there was just kind of nothing going on, that some of these cards have to be higher mana cost, right? Oh. I don't even know what I want to do as Yala on this turn. Like, Rune Dorb and Discover a Pexis Blast is kind of the best I can come up with because this Mask of Cthulhu is god-awful. That sounds even better, but... Is it too I, late at this point? I would have Mask of Cthulhu and just hope it all went face. <laughs> and, not, and not even looked if it did or not, just played it. <laughs> yeah, Tice with an appropriate reaction. Like, it's not what you want to see, but it's not a disaster either. Like, you can really ramp up the pressure at this point with Aldor Truthseeker, then Librum of Hope. You need to crush the mage before they can get the value out of Deck of Lunacy later on. Yeah, not wanting to proc save here makes sense. I should play some cards this turn because he's got a lot of them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you want them in play, not in your hand. Yeah, I think it's about time this true seeker hits the board, right? Okay. Get these Labrums reduced, get, you know, opening up future plans here. And it is great for him that he can push, what, uh, 11 damage here? Like, that is a significant portion. You're homing in on lethal real quick. And almost more importantly, your opponent is, I think, quite clearly repping that they don't have flame strike. So if you just go wide on the board, it's going to be really tough for them to actually clear this up. Again, I'd really like to see Yogg here, but it looks like tight. Okay, he's going to go for it. Yeah. Okay. So a turn later than I would have imagined, but still does get it down. Uh, okay. Not bad, right? With Mask of Cthulhu. Like, uh, I, I guess the fact there's a secret there and Oh My Yog could mess you up. But maybe you just go for Mask of Cthulhu and hope to hit Cycle of Hatred or well, Flame Strike. Yeah, I, I was going to suggest this. Like, I aspire you to get the Yog out the way and then you could actually just go Ring Toss instead. Ooh. Sure. Yeah, you could still dunk tank. tank, depending on what happens with the Ice Barrier, of course. But Ring Toss is, is going to be pretty nice, at least to buy him some time. Maybe you can get Netherwind in the um, uh, o Oasis something or other. The other secret, the new one. Oasis Ally, that's it. There it is, yeah. Uh, I, th I think uh, I like going for the, as you said, uh, the Ring Toss here. Oasis Ally seems pretty good good uh, in this instance, all things considered, and then Counterspell, Ice Barrier, any other ones you can get to bide yourself some time. Dunk Tank, you probably want to save, right, so you don't activate the horse. Yeah, I guess you're not really removing you're moving, what, one damage from the board? Oh, no, I... Yeah. yeah, I don't know about that. I guess he spends the mana, so like he has Mask of Cthulhu plus a ping next turn if he needs to to clear things up. It's very minute differences for sure. Yeah, I think he really would have liked Netherwind Portal to pair with the Oasis ally, right? Because at the moment, it's just a bit of a dead secret. Oh. Hey, 
This is just one of those huge boards, right? Like two Mask of Cthulhu isn't really going to cut it. And Yala, with this hand, hasn't been able to do the, you know, the aggro route you can do without Deck of Lunacy. Yep. It's going to need to be something miraculous off the top. We're looking for Skull of Gul'dan. Cutting class, I suppose, well, is something. more card draw. Yeah. yeah. He doesn't know it's not Yogg, though, right? Uh, true. Because it was just played this turn. Okay. Oh! Okay. He could shuffle the horses into his deck, but still, it's not good <laughs> enough. Oh, it's just... Yeah, this... The actual lack of the... um, What's the card I'm thinking of? Hmm. Encanter's Flow, there we go, sorry, right. I drew a complete blank. The lack of Encanter's <laughs> Flow is huge, because imagine if he had Justice then, and could have played Mask. Mm. Like, oh, the game could have turned around there. Well, he does, from his perspective at least, get to survive the turn, right? Because it's 14 damage, and even from where we're sat right now, it's not quite lethal yet. Uh, it is now because of the Yarg, right? It's the second spell he needs. It'll be four damage with the end finger. It's only three damage, right, with two spells? I mean, now it is, of course, with the... Oh, sorry, yeah, yeah, it's three, so three. Yeah. I always add the first one on before the spell and then just add one <laughs> Like, you know, add an extra one in as well at the end for some reason. Just for yeah, good measure. Right. <laughs> but yeah, that will do it for Tice. It was close for Yala. Uh, you know, a couple of better spells at the end and maybe could have got the job done. But, you know, as has been said multiple times, Mage is obviously a lot weaker without the Deck of Lunacy and specifically so in this matchup where it feels like the Burst is not able to get there because in the late game they have so many minions, so clearly mask of uh mask of cthulhu sorry does absolutely nothing as we saw there it was essentially two dead cards in hand for the whole game uh, and in the early game they just have too much oppression coming towards too much damage on the board yeah it's so difficult to get a hold and i think this devolving missiles we just saw was where it all started to unravel really for yala like devolving missiles of five five divine shield into a four seven is not Oof. really what you expect to happen uh, so yeah, it all went a little bit downhill from there. This golem just staying on board all game was pretty impressive as well, and it was just never enough. A bit of a rough draw there from Yala, like we said. He, I'm gonna say he missed deck of lunacy because technically he did. Uh, no encounters flow. Uh, there were no refreshing spring waters as well actually involved in the game, which again is a hugely impactful card to not only cycle but just have those big sort of miracle power turns. So yeah, he missed a lot of tricks there. And at least for Tice, he manages to save some face and actually win a game against Mage when he left it up, which I think has been the overall criticism <laughs> of Grandmasters this week, yep. of any who have left Mage up has, has generally lost a good chunk of games, even whilst trying to target it. So a good win on the board there for Tice, but Yala has more goes yet. He has two more goes at uh, you know, most on this Mage, and it looks like Tice is gonna go for this Warlock. And honestly, looking at the lineup from Tice, it might be a stretch to say, but I do think it is a, you know, at least a half target mage lineup. Uh, because this Warlock, again, does have game in this matchup if he doesn't get completely steamrolled by Deck of Lunacy. But that seems just like a, a given uh, to say right now. Yeah, another garbage looking hand for Yala. Like, drawing these seven drops is even worse than it may appear. Not only are they unplayable, it means that if you ever do find Deck of Lunacy, you have some of the best cards to convert upwards in terms of their cost just gone from the deck. It uh, is looking at the moment like we could go all the way unless things turn around for Yala in the near future. Yeah, even, you know, this Scorpion's fine, but even this Ogamancer we've seen get a lot of work done as well. So even just having to play this Ogamancer on curve against what obviously is a very slow opening from Yala seems like uh, Tice has all the tools required at this point. Oh, coin Ogamancer, Ogamancer. Could happen. This is an interesting one. I, I guess you're probably not that interested in Backfire, despite it being one of the better cards here overall. Uh, like, he's got plenty of card draw available with the tap, obviously, and the uh, Lucky Soul as well. 
Well, that's refreshing spring water, but yeah, I, I would have uh, probably naturally gone for Twisted Nether just so I can kill those uh, Nag Grand Slams. Mm, okay. Sure. I mean, the really heartbreaking thing here for Yana, though, I think, isn't isn't even going to be what's in his own deck. It's what is in his opponent's hand with Coin Ogomancer, Ogomancer. Yeah. It is so hard for Mage to answer that without devolving missiles. This is just combustion. I mean, I'm kind of wondering if it's just ring toss to spend the mana while you can. Like, I don't know, maybe you get Netherwind Portal to go with the coin or counter spell. I don't know, but your mana is spoken for for the next few turns with Apex, Apexis into Apexis. Like, hmm. uh, I think the reason I like this is one, the Scorpid's gone, you forget about it. Because if you can Apexis, then does he have to Apexis the Scorpid? next turn, which feels kind of bad. But also, Brain Freeze is just a more flexible, better card. And it's not like a ping to face means anything at this point in the game, right? So I actually really like that choice of combustion there from Yala. But now he has the knowledge of Coin Ogomancer. And uh, I feel like I've seen this a lot this weekend where it's just, eh, Apex is blasted and hope. Yeah, little that will get the kill through the taunt as well, but like you said, you're just hoping for a big old five drop. There is Fireball Brain Freeze now, but again, that oh, just doesn't feel good enough. And also actually doesn't proc Ring Toss, right? Doesn't corrupt it, so that's also a negative. True. Yeah. yeah, I think it's just Apex's Blast and Go. Oh, I think he pointed that at the face, though. That oh, yeah. is brave. Oh, okay. That's a pretty good one to get. I mean, this might sound very adventurous, but that Apexis Blast to face with another one in hand and a fireball, like, <laughs> eh, it's close. Wonder. It's close. I mean, you're then, congratulations, only 10 damage off lethal before you then need to deal with the trillion healing that Warlock will do. But you're losing this game anyway. It's, you yeah, may I as well be ambitious. Work with what you got, right? Yeah. Or you could just Are complain all the time. Well? <laughs> like me, that also works. <laughs> yeah, keep the threats coming. Summer, not you. Oh, there's your 10. <laughs> <laughs> Checkmate, noob. <laughs> gotcha. <laughs> So, Apex's hmm. face again. Yeah, like, I'm looking a lot more heavily at Apex's brain freeze on one of the Ogomancers now. I appreciate that it's terrible, but oh. everything here is terrible. Wouldn't you Apex's one and brain freeze the other? Uh, Flame sure. Yeah, yeah, I guess so. You fill up the board with stuff. Uh, at which point, maybe you're supposed to just fireball instead uh, so that you don't sacrifice the minions uh, to the tutus. That's true. Yeah, I think if Flame Strike's the plan, then yeah, it's probably just do that, like Fireball and uh, Brain. Works against me. Oh. <laughs> Imagine. Knows where it's at. <laughs> I mean, it's lethal if you just add up all the damage, right? <laughs> He's gonna Brain Freeze one at least, so one will be able to go down for the uh, to to the Flame Strike next turn. All he needs is like one in ten, one times ten to the ten with these Mask of Cthulhu. He's there. It's oh, gonna flame strike first. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Crazy thing is, like, it won't happen. But if this board ended in this state, the flame strike actually wouldn't generate any more tokens, would it? No, it wouldn't. Yeah, they go before the spell. Now, obviously, trades are going to happen, but I'm just saying it's like one of those small benefits you get. And this 6-3 uh, is going to eat a lot of these tokens as well. It's not even that bad for Yala, even though it kind of looks terrible. Oh, okay, he's not going for it. I was kind of looking at Ticketus there, I'm honest, if I'm being honest, just to get a 6-mana 8-8 on the board. Like, 
it's another thing that eats through the flame strike, right? The, I don't know. I guess deleting 10 cards from the Major's deck is a good way to secure the game at the end, uh, once you get to that point. Yep, there's the flame strike. Ice nuts, kind of probably expecting it. I think once you go into turn seven, you've not seen any craziness from the mage, which is a deck of lunacy encounters. You're like, yeah, okay, but you're probably gonna get hit by a flame strike here. But Tice got some refill. Yeah, not corrupting the strong man always hurts because you don't wanna you wanna be able to resurrect it with your charge later on in the game. But let's get some pressure on the board. Force the mage well, to clear your board. Well, most importantly, it procs Ticketus if you don't if you play it like this, true. right? So yeah. he has a Ticketus in hand to play next turn to then burn that deck of lunacy from Yala's deck. Not that it'll matter. Again, I think it's another game. Would you agree where we're past the point of deck of lunacy being a big deal? Very rapidly approaching it. Like if you were to get deck of lunacy next turn and then get Skull of Gul'dan off the top, we can talk. Sure. But it's niche. Hmm. With, it, with two masks and the fireball, do you, uh, is it ever a mask turn? Oh, what, mask and brain freeze? That's interesting. Like, yeah, an brain extra freeze obviously if needed, but... Yeah, an extra 2-2 two -two will spawn. It's hmm. honestly kind of unlikely that you even deal three damage to the 6-6 six -six here. I, I like the thinking to try and go a little bit more laterally here to try and connect some damage with the mask, but you clear things up with the flame strike here, then at the end yeah. of it all, you go with the mask. Like, who knows, maybe he just doesn't have any of his big minions here. If his hand is full of removal and you just get to point mask face here, it's possible. Hmm. Maybe you just delete the game from existence. <laughs> and that's your win condition. I'm not playing anymore. <laughs> I'm done. I'm packing up my game and I'm going home. <laughs> I think at this point, it's just hard for Tice to not play Ticketus. I think he's thinking about Life Tap. I wouldn't even hate it if he liked Ticketus and like Drain sold his own Ticketus. If, if he's if he's worried about his health. Yeah, I think at this point, you're not afraid of like the one turn burst. It's more just chipping down over a few turns. And uh, oh yeah, look at this. He's got the Tamsin as well for a double Drain Soul if he needed any more heal. Oh, one fireball. Okay, that's the biggest deal out of all those. That stings. That one definitely stings. With Arcane Intellect, though, if you can get yourself devolving missiles and they get a bad three drop as opposed to, uh, you know, another injured Blade Master here, or uninjured Blade Master more appropriately, then you can launch Fireball at the face. Uh, Mask of Cthulhu can be okay next turn. It's, from Yala's perspective, not necessarily over quite as of yet. I think, like, hmm. Ring Toss Fireball here. and get the secrets that you know like netherwind just anything to make minions although i guess like making minions probably doesn't matter because that's what warlock excels at removing so oh. okay there we go deck of lunacy finally found slammed onto the board he new smashed the plan. table almost smacking that down and yes absolutely we have a new game plan ice barrier great that might keep him alive for a little while before he plays the second one counter spell sure the problem is, realistically, what is he actually going to to achieve, right? I am going to show this up. It's I think it'll look how I want it to. Yeah, they're the cards left before Lunacy, of course. Yeah. And none of those look like they can generate anything too crazy. <laughs> I guess the one cost to Fireballs. I can't believe my initial reaction is to say, like, oh, that Ring Toss could become a Mask of Cthulhu, and that might help him here when he has two <laughs> sitting in the hand doing absolutely nothing. Yeah, at this point, it's going to have to become, like, another Flame Strike to clear this up, I think. Uh, 
I mean, okay. That's a lot of burst. So if he can go... <laughs> um... Oh, I mean, like, if I ignore Tice's hand, then okay, he can go Metamorphosis Hero Power, deal the eight, and then Fireball, and maybe he gets another Fireball off the top. Well, he can do that with Ice Barrier, right? It's, yeah, 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 he fine. can get there. Yeah. yeah, he can do that. It's just obviously that Tice can heal for at minimum 12 on the next couple of turns with Tamsin and four Drain Souls. Mm. even ignoring all the soul fragments all in the deck and capable time. to be added to the deck as well. Yeah, there are currently only three, uh, but yes, there's uh, the ability to add a few more. You can double school, of course, with Tamsin. Oh. <laughs> it has to be meta, right? Yeah. Meta ping, they go down to 13. Meta ping, they go down to 9. Like, with no healing from Tice and a fortunate top deck from Yala, this is theoretically possible, of course. The, the interesting thing here is for Tice to heal that much, okay, a bit different now, he yeah. would have actually had to have killed his Ticketus, right? Yeah. Just, to, you know, if we're living in really weird circumstances right now. Obviously, he has Scorpid now, so that changes a little bit. But if he wanted to actually go, like, double Drained Soul or triple Drained Soul, then he, he would actually kill off his Ticketers. Ticket us, so get two zero mana ones. Yeah, you could probably just hold on to those as yeah, well. Yeah, bank him, yeah. He's not getting 19, is he? Wait Ooh. a minute. Is he? <laughs> if ever it was going to happen, that is the card to make it happen. Okay, you can get a ticket. Not bad. Us. That is bad. Uh, that's that? pretty bad too, yeah. Oh, you know the card does not played warrior this season. <laughs> um, in his own ticketus, does he? Oh, I don't know. The problem is he's not had to actually force any removal from Tice all game. So yeah, you can't even ex this getting his own ticketus really is he just gets to kill his opponent's ticketus without using burn. I mean, he knows 100% at least it could be made to an 8-2 on the following turn with the two Drain Souls, and you have to imagine there'll be enough to close it out afterwards. Mm. <sighs> All right, he's getting the damage face, though. Lethal represented next turn with Fireball plus the uh, Metamorphosis ping as well. Technically. Also squeezing a normal hero power ping after that, right? Mm -hmm. One extra Damahi. I wonder. But there's a couple of ways to go about this. Like, in a way, you want to play Twisting Nether Strongman just to get something on the board. Obviously, you would have to play some form of healing alongside that. Um, but if you're not too concerned with developing immediate tempo that way and getting the Strongman in the pool for your charge, this feels like a uh, obviously a much safer option keeping the removal and just getting that big minion in play okay uh, sure only three cards left for yala and that mana cost of the lunar okay well that's just broke <laughs> <laughs> i told a lie Okay, well, I'm not sure which ones are left. Whatever, ignore everything I just did. Try to be fancy. Uh, moving swiftly on. Torrent can kill off the 6-6. Six, six. The, uh... Well, not going to be enough. He, he just needs more fireballs. And for Tice not to draw any of the fragments. And I believe he has five in the deck now, out of 16 cards. That's right. We're at one fragment is allowed to be drawn, and then your ping face and your double fireball. I don't see any better way for Yala to take the win than that, or really any other way for Yala to take the win outside of that. So there's one. One. 
just one though. And uh, yeah, I guess ticket to well, side for the ties. We'll just take care of things. What was it? Fell in Pride's Fury and Paul. <laughs> uh, okay, well they wouldn't have got the job done anyway. That is going to be the game, and Tice is still in this series. And we are going to be continuing on to a game number five. Derek, is this the series that Mage gets 3 0'd? Are we going to have it? It's looking like it. It's, uh, if anything, for Tice, uh, you know, we were expecting it down 0 and 2, things to be looking disastrous for him with the Mage left over as the one most powerful deck in the metagame. But all along, what we thought was the Apex Predator was in fact but the prey for Tice's game plan. Uh, you know, it's no secret that uh, Yala has had absolutely apocalyptically bad draws in both of the Mage games so far. He has had none in both his games so far of Deck of Lunacy, Encounters Flow, or Spring Water at the start of the game. And he's, he has had at least two seven cost spells in his starting hand both times. That is literally as bad as you can get. Uh, and so in this last game, he has one final chance to get a halfway decent draw uh, before he is aggroed down with the Rogue as the last remaining deck for Tice. Yeah, you know what would really like grind my gears with this is if after all this of Tice coming back, Yala just goes deck and lunacy 2, GG. And <laughs> just uh, absolutely destroys Tice in this last game. I'll be like, come on, at least make it a little bit dramatic. It's nothing if not dramatic. I've thoroughly enjoyed this series, despite it entering hour eight of my casting, or hour nine now, uh, of my casting day so far. I absolutely love watching these two players compete again. As I said, I still believe Ty uh, Tice to be one of the best players in the world. Uh, you know, it's easy to call the popular streamers uh, not up to the competition anymore. That could not be further from the truth with Tice and Yala very arguably just is the best player in the world after his run last year and ending up all the way in the finals of Grand Mar uh, of the World Championship. But here, it all comes down to, can he draw finally a non-terrible hand as Mage? He's even throwing away Font of Power just to try and find that Blooming Deck of Lunacy, which he's certain is somewhere in the deck. And I will say that for me, this is actually the matchup I like the best on Tice's side. I, I, oh, I think yeah. this matchup is fine as Rogue, especially with his opening. He has the Mancrick to chuck down tons of stats. Tice is going to now get out that Neophyte and have the Octobot back up turn two. The spot removal with those two brain freezes if there was a font of power early enough in the game. So his hand's looking okay. Obviously needs a little bit of card draw, but I think this is the right shape of hand you want in the immediate early game. Gorgeous curve at the start as well for Tice. I wasn't necessarily expecting the coin into Cult Neophyte here, but it works pretty well. You know, if you're expecting to see Deck of Lunacy, they weren't able to play it. And the news is even better than that, because even if he wanted to, he couldn't play it. Yala has the option now of just Combustion on the Octo, which would completely shut down its Frenzy. They would leave the 3-1 up. And Yala definitely won't want to take tons of damage early in the game. I think you're actually just supposed to leave it on this turn. Like, it's scary to let them go for that, but they don't have all too many cards left in hand. You're tanking three damage every single turn here. It, it was absolutely a very, very close one, but I, this is getting scary already. I think what tipped it over for me was the Rune Orb in hand. It means he can actually use Rune Orb and ping this turn, or Rune Orb X based sure. on what Discover, whereas Combustion this turn would feel pretty bad as well, because then it's off curve, might not fit whatever gets played next and so on. So I think Yala did the right thing. Time. In general, it just sure. might not pay off for him this game. Well, here I'm honestly in the kind of situation or in the mindset where I think Rune Orb should just be played on the Neophyte here, because if you don't get Encanter's Flow or Deck of Lunacy here, you are going to be rapidly losing this game. We just get this graphic time. just stuck. <laughs> on the screen, please. <laughs> Maybe we should just ask Yala to tape it to his forehead for next series <laughs> of Grandmasters, just so we know what he's after. I mean, I think he has to kill this 3-1. If he's killing this 3-1, he's probably pinging. If he's pinging, he may as well play Rundar. But even if he sends it to the face or something, I don't know. Like, just do something. Work out what spell you can get. Maybe it helps him. 
Fireball fix. Oh, okay, to the man quick. <laughs> Imagine. Wait, I've got Mask of Cthulhu and then Doodle. Maybe <laughs> I can make it. <laughs> oh, really nice here. Far watch post into Swindle. Oh, this is the game you want as Rogue. Couldn't really be much better. He just needs any way to spend his mana on impactful threats in the mid game. Oh, Kazakus and Jandis yes. primarily. I was say, what if you just shadow step this Neophyte, replay it next Love time it. you can play Neophyte Secret Passage and just not let Yala play the game? I think this is very, very smart. You're looking at a Pexis Blast on this turn as the premier play and it is just uncastable now. Yala has to resort to Rune Orb, I suppose, to try and find deck of Lunas here. It wouldn't even be playable on this turn if he got it. Well, um, Nether Wind Portal, hmm. anyone? I don't think so. I think you got to clear that three damage off the board. Oh, well, really? Well, myself and the world's greatest Hearthstone player disagree, oh. Eric. <laughs> I think he needs something on the board is the problem. He can clear that next turn, right? It's so bad. <laughs> it just hurts. I can't handle this. I've I've had lived a soft life so far, Raven. I'm used to APAC where we draw lunacy on two every game. Yeah. You're not a, uh, a veteran of EU now. <laughs> that I, I've probably just about hit. For saying, yeah, you just get used to it, my friend. You become numb to this. <laughs> I just come over to work. Europe casting and you're shaking in the corner. <laughs> no lunacy. No lunacy. Anything to make the games last longer. <laughs> <laughs> Another neophyte coming down here for Tice. And this is, uh, obviously this draw has been good for Tice, but I think decision making, tick all of those boxes. It's oh, yeah. just been good. You can see what what a mess every single turn has been from Yala. And I'm not even saying that from, from his decision-making point of it, but from his hand. Like, he's just not really been able to have a good turn. Well, now we can decide to at least stop messing around. Instead of doing five mana doing nothing like we did on the previous turn, let's spend three mana actually clearing some stuff off the board and trying to find Deck of Lunacy. Spring water, yeah. That's the best you're going to get. Slam the passage. You don't even... Yeah, choices, choices, choices. Seems good. That's okay. Not the best set of cards to get. What about everything, and this might sound weird, but what about everything but the field contact and just wicked uh, stab the 2 far? It's a tough one. My first instinct was to say field contact and then orc merchant to give divine shield to the field contact because that does protect against flame strike at least. Uh, it's weak to Mask of Cthulhu, but I think, y you know, if you're making yourself resilient against half of the expected seven cost players, it's probably worth it. I mean, that's fair. And of course, you have the chance to continue the chain okay. as we see here. Yeah, Shadow Step off the top gonna help pretty nicely. Another Divine Shield can come down here. And that also means that the 2 4 can be cleared up. Yeah, that's true. I was going to say you, go f you should go for the Neophyte again, but that means you can't clear the board, so this, uh, yeah, is more sensible. More card draw? Yeah, you'll happily take that. And it also means this way, if you want to be positive about it, the Wicked Stab is still in the deck, so it still can be drawn to help with lethal, right? It, yep. You know, if you didn't use it to clear the minion. So, although it looked like a very easy way to clear off the minion, it really was just like, well, now it can just go face. Takes care of the watch post, but most importantly, that Neophyte is still knocking about, still pushing face for three every single turn. And uh, whether or not we make it to turn 10 where we see the full cost Wicked oh, Stabs, oh, Yala could just be dead if that Mask of Cthulhu is devastating. I pick potion just to play more neophytes this game. <laughs> I knew you were going to say that. Hey, neophytes been the best card in this game of Hearthstone, okay? <laughs> yeah. 
hey, Wild Growth is great in this Druid deck. I'm going to play nothing but Wild Growths for the rest of my game. Hey, Wild Growths can't go face. <laughs> <laughs> You've oh, got me weird. there, I guess. And and Mask of Cthulhu in hand now for Ty's. Plenty of damage, especially as we edge towards turn 10, if it goes that far, as you mentioned, but... Oh. Here's your water. I hope you drown in it. <laughs> With these refreshing spring waters here. Yeah, these are, uh, these are truly a mirage. There is nothing to drink here. Just sand and bad memories. He gets a one-turn grace period, as it currently looks like, unless Penflinger comes off the top, because Tice does not have a way to close out the game quite yet. I think, honestly, you can just go Mars right? and yep. yeah, You 10. don't need to develop the board. Yeah, yep. Bank 10 to the face, get the dagger there, and any, as long as Tice can go Wicked Stab, he's happy. It's going to be good. All right, Deck of Lunacy right now. It has to be, and you have to draw into it. You have to get some healing. We're looking at making a board plus Rancor, some weird nonsense like that, because nothing else will do. I think you just go again with Refreshing Spring Water. You Why need not? a miracle. Yeah. Why not at this point? Just do it. Yep. Hmm. I don't think there's anything from Font of Power that can actually heal Yala in any way. So, yeah, just you may as well, right? Yeah. Oi, oi, oi. After all that, Tice looks like he's going to be able to make the comeback here and end this with a reverse sweep of Yala's mage. Players and viewers across the world scoffed when they saw players weren't banning mage. Never doubt Tice. Yeah, if anyone was going to do it, it would be old Tice. Even with counter spell, as long as Tice sequences this correctly, he will know that he has a 100% lethal. You just got to test for counter spell with the brain freeze, follow things up with wicked stab, and that does mean that Yala after a grueling series, very well fought in those first few games. I loved the way he approached the Priest matchup uh, and both his Warlock mirror that he was up against. But in the end, his mage just had absolutely dreadful draws. And Tice, to, uh, to be fair to him, he capitalized on the bad luck of his opponent beautifully. I think he perfectly understood how to apply maximum pressure in all of those matchups to make sure that even if your opponent does eventually find the deck of lunacy, the encounters flow, the spring waters, whatever they may need, they're just under too much pressure for it to matter. So very well done to Tice. And uh, I look forward to watching him as hopefully a casual onlooker tomorrow in the semifinals. <laughs> yeah, it looks uh, really good there. And again, just to kind of echo what you were saying, it's, uh, it's a brave thing to leave Mage up this week and Tice is making it happen. Ben Bear in mind, Tice was the winner out of his group. As you can see there, the 2-0 next to his name means he won his group 2-0. Now he's won that top eight match, so he's going to be in the semi-finals tomorrow. He hasn't like you know dropped a series in this tournament so far, and uh, I imagine this non-mage ban isn't something he's just done today. I think he's left mage up before as well, so it seems to be working. Like I said, this rogue I like against mage. Uh, everything else we can talk about, but he ended up getting the job done. In this match and that is all that mattered again uh, you know a bit of commiserations to Yala there he had a decent job this week uh, or he did a decent job sorry but those mage draws he needs to go and have some practice for some of the <laughs> players because it just wasn't cutting it today was it so a little bit unfortunate for that